So hi, everybody. Amazing to be here. I'm so uh, flattered to be asked to uh, do this presentation for Global Cred. Uh, it's uh, it's really awesome um, to be with everybody. And I hope you find this presentation useful. So if I give you a little bit of background about myself. So I used to be a languages teacher. I was a French teacher for 13 years, teaching at secondary school level for three years and then 10 years in a middle school, nine to 13 year old. So I've got upper primary and uh, secondary school experience. Um, I live on the Isle of Wight in the UK, in the south of the UK, near Southampton. And uh, uh, for the last 10 years or so, I've been an independent languages consultant, uh, normally going around the world running training on the use of technology and languages. Uh, but uh, of course, since March, I've not been able to go anywhere at all. And I've been uh, turning my business on its head and doing everything via webinars. But um, I hope you find this session uh, useful. What I'm going to be doing essentially is uh, looking at how the uh, the language community, particularly from the UK um, and from Ireland, have uh, come together and have uh, supported each other during the pandemic. Uh, and uh, I'm going to be sharing some good practice about the use of uh, technology that people have found particularly useful. And uh, yeah, let's make a start. So you can see on my uh, on my first screen there, I've got my uh, Twitter a handle, which is at Joe Dell. I've recently surpassed 30,000 followers, which has taken 13 years to do, but I'm obviously very um, pleased about that. And it means that I can, uh, you know, retweet messages for you if you, if you would like. I can uh, support you in any way that you would like me to. And um, it's really, it's really uh, been a labor of love building up um, this sort of community that I'm part of, known as the MFL Twitterati, which is similar to the Langchat community in the States, which I'll talk about in more detail um, later on. My email address is... Uh, uh, Joe Dell at talk21.com as well. So if you want to email me about anything that I'm uh, referring to, feel free to do so. On the last slide, I'm going to share the presentation as a URL, as a QR code. So let's jump in. Okay, so in this uh, session, what I'm going to try and do is uh, go through lots of different tools, which I think are useful for a remote teaching context, as well as for a hybrid context, depending on what you find yourselves in. Um, my understanding is there are, there are lots and lots of schools in the States who are uh, remote teaching, um, some are hybrid teaching, and um, uh, some are face-to-face, -face, apparently. So um, I think there's some, something for everybody here, and I think you should find it useful. So, you, so for those people who are into educational technology, you'll see some of these tools already. Um, and uh, I'm going to be giving some practical examples shared by the community to see how they can be used in, uh, in practical, real situations. OK, let's make a start. Right. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is Jamboard. So Jamboard, if you haven't seen it before, it's a collaborative whiteboard. It's one of those uh, mainstays that you'd expect to see as soon as you wanted to go into remote teaching. So um, I remember getting questions right from the word go from March from people saying, you know, how do I uh, share my screen on a whiteboard? And if you're in a Google environment, then Jamboard is a really nice solution. For Microsoft fans, you've got Microsoft Whiteboard, which is similar. But um, in this example, I'm going to be talking about Jamboard. So I got really into Jamboard. What I thought would be a really good idea would be to start collecting examples of um, how Jamboard was being used, not just for languages, but across the board. And so as I normally do when I'm researching that sort of topic is I go onto Twitter, I do a search for a keyword, in this case, Jamboard. And over a period of uh, a few hours, I was able to come up with some really nice examples and see uh, how it was being used in the classroom. I then took some of those ideas, as well as my own ideas, and I, I um, created three Jamboards, um, which showcase different ways in which they can be used in languages. So as I said, it's a collaborative whiteboard. You can see on the left-hand side there, you've got things like the pen tool, the eraser tool, the select tool, uh, the sticky note tool, the image tool, and the laser pointer. They've also updated it since I did this screenshot, which means you can also have like a text box now um, as well, which is really nice. And if I click on this link uh, right now, I can actually come out of my presentation and I can just give you a flavor of some of the ways you can use this in languages. So for example, um, on the screen right now is a tool called Screencastify, which works really nicely within uh, a Google environment, within Google Drive. So any videos that you create in Screencastify will upload automatically to Google Drive. You can record up to five minutes of a video. So the suggestion is in this example is you could have a Jamboard with various items on it. it could be images or text or drawings, and you can actually move things around the screen while you're recording the screen live. So that's really, really handy, I think. You could use other tools. You could use uh, Loom, for example, or Loom Pro, which allows you to record for longer than five minutes. You could use things such as uh, Flipgrid screen recording as well, which I'm going to talk about more later. 
But Screencastify is very nice. You can record up to five minutes, and it also has the uh, drawing tools as well, which means you can draw over the top uh, of your uh, animation, which is just absolutely fabulous, I think. So if you haven't heard of Screencastify, I'd really encourage you to check it out. Let's look at some other ideas. Here's another idea um, using the website called xwords-generator.de forward slash en. So this is a website which allows you to make online crossword puzzles very, very easily. So the suggestion here is that you could have uh, different items of vocabulary around, uh, for example, um, pets uh, in French. And then the students could then click on the pen tool on the left hand side and write in over the top uh, and make it in a, into a collaborative activity. It's very easy to share the um, um, uh, Google uh, Jamboard with um, your group. All you have to do is click on the share option top right, uh, click on anyone with a link or possibly anyone in your um, domain, uh, if it's a school domain that you're using. And then you can then pop that link into the chat if you're using, say, Google Meet or Zoom or what have you. Uh, also within Google Meet, they've actually embedded Jamboard now as part of um, the features in Google Meet. So you can create a jam right from within Google Meet and automatically copies the link into your into the chat in Google Meet, which is also really nice, I think. Another idea is to use uh, this sort of um, idea around using uh, an emoji, uh, using Bitmojis in uh, in your Jamboard. So I have the Bitmoji Chrome extension installed uh, here, so I can now find uh, an image very easily. If I put in a word like pose, like this, then as you can see, these different items have come up. So I could maybe drag and drop this one and put it straight into my uh, jam like this, which is very nice. And it just appears automatically like that. That's fantastic. Another thing you can do is you can make animated GIFs. So animated GIFs are supported in Jamboard. And you can see on the left-hand side here, it says that you can use a website called gifmaker.me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click onto my Chrome extension here, and I'm going to download a couple of uh, graphics. So I'm going to put in the word pose, which allows you to see uh, Bitmoji, which don't have any text attached. And I'm going to choose a couple of examples to recreate the one that I've got um, animated here. So let's go for this one. OK, so if I right click that, oh, right click that, and I click Save Image As, then that allows me to download that onto my uh, onto the Chrome browser. And then I want to use one, which is the one. Uh, so look, if I can find it, there we are. There it is. If I then right click that, click Save Image As, and download that one as well. There we are. So I've just downloaded those two uh, images. And if I now go to gifmaker.me, which is here, gifmaker.me, and load that up. OK, I can now click Upload Images, and I can choose the two images that I want to use. As you can see, I've got lots of images on my desktop, but never mind. So I'm going to choose this one, and I'm going to choose this one, and I'm now going to click Open. There we are. So there we are. And as you can see, that has now created this animated GIF. I can choose how fast it moves and the canvas size. But I'm just, for this demonstration, just going to click Create GIF Animation like this. Then I click Download the GIF like this. I click Save. OK, there it is. I now go back to my Jamboard. And I click on the Image option like this. And then I just drag my GIF straight into the box. And it appears on my screen like this. There we are. So it just shows you how easy it is to make your own animated GIF. And what a great way of bringing the language to life. You could use this as a uh, maybe a prompt for a learning objective or maybe some sort of you know dialogue, or just just for fun, really, uh, just having fun with the uh, with animation. I find that students really like animation, and so anything that will bring your Jamboard to life is a great idea. I think a few more examples. This um, is a video by Russell Stannard, who uh, is an amazing uh, educational consultant. He has a fantastic website called Teach Teacher Training Videos, and uh, teaching training videos. He's also on YouTube. You just do a search for Russell Stannard, then you'll find lots of videos that he's done. And he's done a whole, a whole range of different videos around uh, Zoom. And this one's one of my favorites around breakout rooms. So the suggestion is you could create breakout rooms and you could assign different uh, different uh, frames in your Jamboard to different breakout rooms in order for the students to do an activity. So you could, for example, have frame one for breakout room number one, frame two for breakout room number two, et cetera and then give um, the students a, ta a task to do, and then they all fill it in on the uh, on the Jamboard, and the teacher can monitor all the, the different frames in real time at the same time, which is very nice indeed. I just whipped through a few others. This is just a classic um, Photos of Class activity, which is a, a directory of royalty-free images. So you put an image in the middle of the Jamboard, and then you ask questions around it in the target language. 
Uh, this one is using the snipping tool, which comes with Windows, which allows you to drag over uh, some image on a, on, a, on a website or some text and put it straight into Jamboard. That's really easy. This is if you use Google Jamboard, uh, you can, um, in conjunction with Google Classroom, you can assign a Jamboard per student if you want to, and so on and so forth. So there's lots and lots of different ideas here, which uh, I'm sharing with you uh, for practicing games, grammar activities, reading comprehension, dialogue work. Uh, it's just, you know, the, the, the ideas are, are uh, limitless, I think. Right, let's go back to my presentation. And as I said, I'm sharing the whole presentation with you. So you've got all these um, three links here, and you can just uh, use them as much as you would like to. OK, if you are using the iOS or the Android app version of Jamboard, there are a few additional features. So for example, uh, you have the assistive drawing tools. So you have, for example, the uh, capital A and the little a there. Uh, if you click on that or tap on that on your device, it means you can then write a word and it will turn into a digital text, which is very nice. You've also got the circle and the square option. So if you then tap on that and you try and draw a circle, it will turn into a perfect circle, likewise with a square or a triangle or a star. If you tap on the pen icon, then it will uh, create what's called auto draw, which means you could draw a picture of a cat, for example, and it will suggest an actual uh, professional looking piece of clip art for that cat, which you then tap on and it will turn your annotated picture into something which looks a lot more professional. In the app version of Jamboard as well, you've also got the possibility of adding content from Google Drive. Uh, you've also got some stickers as well. Uh, lots of different things which you can do to um, enhance uh, the use of Jamboard. And the whole point of uh, drawing, um, adding sticky notes, lots and lots of different things that you can do to enhance language learning. OK, the next thing I want to talk about are the uh, webinars which I've put together uh, based around the idea of technology and language teaching. So um, I helped, um, uh, along with my uh, friend and colleague, um, Helen Myers, who is the chair of the Association for Language Learning London branch, we decided back in lockdown at the beginning in March, we would put together a whole set of different um, webinars uh, by teachers, for teachers. Uh, we contacted people from literally all over the world, lots of people from the States, some very well-known names like Catherine Uslan, Meredith White, and... Um, and people like that. Uh, so we were really, really, really delighted. Uh, Heidi Trude as well did a fantastic webinar for us. We were really delighted to see um, so many amazing teachers all sharing their expertise on how technology could be used to support remote teaching. Now, the first video that we did was based around a uh, Google Doc, which I put together, which I started in March. I decided to you know, collect lots of different stories and, um, and web pages that I came across on social media, on Twitter, on Facebook, and pull them all together into a Google Doc. So you can see here that there's a Google Doc, which is available at the bottom of the screen here. And I categorized uh, everything into different uh, chapters. So getting started, world language teachers share tips on remote learning, video conferencing tools, screencasting tools, useful tools for online learning, et cetera, et cetera. So it started off about 18 pages. It's now about 40 pages. So there's really something for everybody. Um, and it goes through like overview articles. It goes through different ways of using Zoom or Google Meet, different ways of using screencasting tools, lots of ideas around interact, interactive uh, exercise. It's really uh, something for everybody, I think. So that's uh, that's what we did there. And then uh, from um, that document came an article which was written by uh, a principal at a uh, British international school in Rome, uh, David Tong. And this really resonated with me. So as you can see, um on the uh, on the screen there he's talking about you know the silver lining of the pandemic could be that those teachers who have been reluctant to use technology maybe would have their their um, mindset changed as a result of having to use the technology having to have a whiteboard having to um uh create interactive activities having to uh do formative assessment online that maybe they've never done before and so possibly their mindset would change as a result of that. And to me, that is something that's that's positive from this this whole situation. Uh, this is something I've been encouraging for many, many years. But uh, but obviously, uh, now that we have the, the lockdown and we have um, the pandemic situation, I think many, many more teachers are trying things out for the first time, which is really lovely to see, I think, in lots of ways. OK, now I mentioned the, the MFL Twitter RT community. So the MFL Twitter RT community, there's 5,000 members. The hashtag MFL Twitter RT has been used by, uh, by language teachers from all over the world for many years. It's similar to the LangChat community in the States. And uh, you can imagine that during the whole pandemic, there have been many, many conversations about 
uh, ideas around pedagogy, what works, what doesn't work. And this is just a typical example um, around the idea of, you know, change in mindset. So Francisco, as you can see, there is talking about, um, uh, you know, would we see a boom in the use of technology and education after lockdown? Would schools use it as a tool to close the gap? For example, online intervention sessions, recorded capture lessons, etc. This was back in April. Uh, in the UK, all the schools have gone back, although there are clearly, you know, lots of uh, students and teachers who are self-isolating because of, um, they've been infected by the virus. But uh, but nonetheless, we have, you know, uh, generally speaking, people are teaching face to face, but there are uh, hybrid examples as well. And so I think that's exactly what's happening. Teachers are using uh, screencasting. They are using um, uh, a hybrid context whereby they maybe have a Quizlet live running in the classroom and some children are taking part at home, for example. And then you've got Adam Lamb there saying, um, I can see now how I would definitely use it to supplement. But the thing for me is it's so much more difficult to monitor, intervene compared to strolling around with a red pen during practice time. So this is quite ironic in a way, because now there are many teachers that have been told that they're not allowed to move around the classroom. They have to stay at the front. They have to re remain two meters away from all students. And therefore, in that context, how do you do feedback? How do you do speaking practice? It's really challenging. And I'm going to give some solutions to that in an asynchronous idea uh, using tools such as Flipgrid and uh, Quicker Conversations. OK, so as you can see here, Vincent is saying uh, if we can get around the danger of technology, making the gap worse. That's also something which has been really highlighted during the pandemic, the uh, the difference between those students who, are ha who have access to technology and those students who don't. Um, it might be, for example, you know, one laptop in a family that only the, the father or the mother has access to because that's their work laptop. So then how do you create um, synchronous lessons or even asynchronous lessons for the students? How do they access that if they don't have their own device? It's really tricky or the or Internet connectivity. And I'm sure that you've you have the same experience in the States as well. And then you've got a prof and a fellow at the bottom. Will you be finding the time to make distribute and mark the work produced as a result of online intervention sessions? You're making a rod for your own back. OK, so there's some negativity as well around that. Also, again, in face to face lessons, there are lots of schools who, who are banning uh, the uh, teachers from marking books um, because of the fact they're touching the exercise books, which could have the virus. Uh, so they're going they're going down the digital route of either taking photographs of the books and then marking them that way or they're doing everything online via Microsoft Teams or Google Classroom, et cetera. So it's really interesting how much there's been a cultural shift, I think, during this time. So I mentioned the, the Technology Language Teaching Webinars, uh, or TILT for short. So there's been over 50 since March. Uh, we started off by uh, doing sessions around uh, a Google environment and a Microsoft environment. We looked at ideas around sort of screencasting. We then uh, became a bit more creative. We, we uh, did some uh, webinars around escape rooms and virtual adventures. Um, and more recently, we, we've been looking at you know hybrid teaching and suggestions around that. Uh, there's, so there's really lots and lots of things to have a look at. And uh, if you want to find out more, just go on to the AWL London branch uh, or my YouTube channel, which is Jodale 100. The links are all on the slides here. But just give you a flavor of how this works. If I click here, this is my friend uh, Helen Myers, who's put together an amazing uh, database, um, pulling together all the different videos that we've um, done so far, the webinars. Uh, tagging them with all the different um, examples of content that were covered in these webinars. Uh, it's just incredible. So lots of really, really useful um, ideas and content for you. If you're if you're stuck, or you're looking for ideas around more or less everything you could think about, I would suggest to do, to do with technology and languages um, delivered by some of the some of the top people in the whole world, I would suggest. OK, let's uh, let's carry on. So back in March, I was really inspired by the Bitmoji Craze for Educators Facebook group, which has well over 500,000 members now. And one of the things I was seeing at the time were people were using the iMovie app, and in particular, the trailer option in the iMovie app, which works on iOS, on uh, iPhones and iPads. And they were using that as a way of pulling together the, Bit the Bitmoji characters in order to make um, either an advert or maybe for giving some feedback to students. And um, I thought it would be a really nice idea to put together a presentation that's only a minute long, just showcasing the Tilt webinars and how everything changed back in March of this year. So hopefully you'll find this interesting and it only lasts a minute. So let's go for it.
And there we are, really simple to put together. All you have to do is just follow the template and uh, away you go. Okay, another thing I thought would be really useful around the time of the uh, of the lockdown starting was to get together with a group of um, language teachers who are experts on the use of certain video conferencing tools such as Zoom, Microsoft Teams, and Google Meet. So I put together a Google form with the same questions on such as, uh, can attendees join a session before the teacher? Can the teacher enable a waiting room? Can the teacher automatically mute attendees audio upon entry into a, into a session, et cetera, et cetera. I sent the Google form to um, these different experts in their field. They answered all the questions. I then put all the answers together into a table, which actually runs over two pages. And uh, when I shared this on Twitter, uh, I got a lot of Twitter love because uh, it's exactly what people needed, I thought, at the time, which is why I uh, decided to to, um, to crowdsource it and put it together for everybody. So to try and keep everyone safe, um, it's really important that we know these sorts of security features. And so we uh, we reduce the uh, potential of the students um, being silly in, in lessons or not keeping everyone safe, which uh, seemed to be a very sensible thing to do. Clearly, this was back in March that, that these um, activities were put together or these suggestions were put together. And I know that uh, in the case of uh, Zoom, Teams, and Google Meet, that they've added a lot of new features. So this might be a little bit out of date now, but certainly it was up to date at the time. And I hope you find it useful. Okay, another thing which um, lots of teachers did for the first time was uh, screencasting. So certainly in the UK, there were some uh, schools that were not allowing um, teachers to do live lessons with uh, their students. In other words, video conferencing sessions using one of the th one of the three tools that I've just mentioned. Um, for the reason of safeguarding, not being able to see into uh, the students' um, houses or the students being able to see into each, into each other's houses or into the teacher's house, etc. And so as a result of that, it was decided that screencasting would be a good thing to do. And um, it was it really you know warms my heart to see uh, teachers saying, you know, oh, I, I tried screencasting for the first time or I tried to use Loom or even, you know, teachers not knowing how to uh, do a narration in a PowerPoint, adding audio to a PowerPoint and saving it as a movie, for example, being able to do a narration that way. So screencasting, um, I wrote um, an article for the Linguascope um, Facebook group, Modern Languages Teachers Lounge, um, all around different ways in which you can use screencasting in languages. There was also a TS article um, called Four Reasons Pre-Recorded Lessons Are Your Best Option, um, which I don't completely agree with. I think um, if you can have a live session at the beginning where you can sort of drop in with the, with the students and you uh, you ask how everyone is, I think well-being, particularly during the pandemic, is incredibly important. So if there is a possibility, that's great. If it's all asynchronous, then that's, uh, that's good as well. But it, it seems to me what lots of schools are doing is they're having like a live synchronous session to begin with. The, uh, the teacher then sets uh, the task or tasks for the students to do, and then they have um, a, a meetup at the end when they do some sort of interactive activity using, say, Socrative or Quizlet Live or quizzes or, or that sort of thing. So um, the, the top three tools that I'm aware of for screencasting are Loom, Screencastify, and Screencast-O-Matic. So the, the uh, logos for those are there. And um, uh, there's also screen recording in Flipgrid as well, which I'm going to talk about a bit later. But you can use this for, as I said, recording your presentation and making it into a multimedia presentation with your voiceover and the, uh, the, the, the slides. Or you could use it as a way of giving video feedback over the top of a Google Doc or a uh, Microsoft Word uh, document, or in OneNote, you can use uh, screen recording as well, uploading straight to Microsoft Stream, or you can do screen recording in PowerPoint as well. So just different ways of um, being able to create asynchronous resources for your students to, uh, to access in a sort of flipped learning model. OK, so here's some feedback from some of the, uh, the MFL Twitterati. So you can see here, top left, you've got Ms. Egan talking about Loom. So she's saying using uh, Loom to walk students through a sample answer, saves time in class, promotes autonomous learning and sense making, and allows for a flipped classroom. Cannot recommend this tool enough. And what I particularly like about this uh, uh, particular tweet is the fact that underneath, Loom themselves back in March have said, love this, so glad we can be useful for your class. And then Ms. Grice MFL is saying, use Loom for the first time yesterday. Thanks for the tip uh, for me. And was surprised how easy it was to use. Definitely recommend it for anyone teaching from home. Rachel then says, how does this compare to Screencast-O-Matic? I've been using that one so far. 
Um, Ms. Gry says, can't uh, compare because I've only used Loom, but it's so simple. The kids really like uh, really like it. And the only downside is it can take a little while to trim or edit your videos. So that's that's typical of the sorts of conversations, as I've said, have been happening all the time uh, as part of the MFL Twitterati, working out what works and what doesn't work and uh, everyone helping everyone else, which has just been lovely to see, I think. Okay. Right. Flipgrid. Uh, Flipgrid has proved very, very popular. I'm sure lots of you know about Flipgrid, but I'm going to talk a about a few more ways in which you can use Flipgrid, particularly after the upgrade in August um, or the new Flipgrid, as it's also referred to as well. So on the left hand side there, you've got Jane Bassnet, who's uh, Bassnet J on Twitter, and she's a massive fan of Flipgrid and she was before the lockdown as well. So in this example, she's creating what's called a Flipgrid short. So she's recording her video. She's got the uh, her image over the top. And she's also got um, the annotation tool. So she's um, annotating while she's speaking. So in this example, she's talking about the simple future in French. And everything has been captured together as a, as a flipped uh, approach model. Then on the right-hand side, she's got a screenshot of um, a grammar explanation of the uh, perfect tense using être as the auxiliary. She's got the image. She's recording her voice. And she's annotating over the, over the, the screen at the same time which is fantastic. So the simple idea behind Flipgrid, if you haven't heard about it before, is that you have what are called um, groups, which are like classes and topics, which are like lessons. So you create a video, which you publish onto your uh, topic. You then ask your students to then record their answers to that uh, video. And they also appear on the uh, in, as part of the topic as well. You can moderate videos if you want to. So only the teacher gets to see the videos that the students have done. You can hide the children's faces if you want to by using the pixel filter or dragging an emoji over the top or even um, covering the whole face with an image if you want to as well. Uh, but you can have lots of creative fun with it. And it's really simple to use. On the left hand side there, you've got Sam Carey. That's K-A-R-Y, Sam Carey, who has the new EdTech Classroom YouTube channel, which I would really recommend. He's done a few videos around Flipgrid, one of which is called How to Teach Remotely with Flipgrid, as well as many other very useful uh, EdTech uh, tutorials as well. And then on the right hand side there, you've got Jess from Flipgrid, who's talking about if some of the ways in which you can use Flipgrid, such as uh, text, emoji, and inking or, anna or annotation, the whiteboard and blackboard, the split screen that you can have. So you can have the whiteboard on one side of the screen and then your webcam on the other, which is really useful for uh, explaining a concept, uh, stop motion animation, um, app smashing, screen recording, um, and trimming and rearranging. So lots and lots of things that you can use uh, for language learning for sure. OK, um, on the left hand side here, you've got Mike Tolfson from Microsoft, who's talking about the new text comment feature. So that you can ha have in addition to video feedback, you can also have text commenting as well. Uh, you've got that Sam Carey again on the right hand side. So he has done a video called Assigning Work with Topics and Groups. Uh, again, really, really worthwhile, um, very comprehensive, uh, saying how you set up Flipgrid in that sort of way. Fantastic stuff. And um, here, this is another example of how you can use Flipgrid. So you can see that there's a, a screenshot top left from a school in the Middle East um, talking about the way in which Flipgrid can, can um, boost the confidence of children in their, in their speaking. Um, you can see, you know, we may not be face to face, but Zoom, Flipgrid and Google Hangouts are our next best things. You've got the screen recording option there as well uh, in Flipgrid, which is fabulous. So um, as you can see, the title at the top there is Flipgrid and Google Earth. When I've been demonstrating this in other webinars that are on my YouTube channel, you'll see that um, what I do is I uh, launch Google Earth. I record my screen um, when I've got Google Earth open. And on the left-hand side in Google Earth, there's a little dice icon, which when you click on it, it's the I'm feeling lucky uh, option. What that does is it will basically take you anywhere in the world. So it could be um, in a city, it could be in somewhere rural, it could be on the top of a mountain, and then you hover over the top of the earth, and then you could ask the students in the target language, what can they see? Uh, can they recognize you know, mountains or rivers, or can they see a cathedral, or could they see a swimming pool, or could they see a stadium, or wh whatever it might be? And then you can drag the peg man on the right-hand side in the corner, onto where the pin is, which comes up automatically. And then uh, if it's available, you can then go into street view and then go right down um, to uh, street level and then ask more questions such as, what's the weather like? Where are you? If you see anybody, you could say, OK, what has this person just done? What are they thinking? How are they feeling? Um, if you see any signs, for example, um, on the road, could you identify them? What do they mean? Or any sort of idiosyncratic um, uh, thing that comes up. Um, you can question in the target language. 
Then on the right hand side there, you've got the fact that um, Flipgrid have now got a Google Chrome extension and a Microsoft Edge extension as well, which means you can record video straight from the browser, which is also very nice indeed. So that screen recording option is, is wonderful for modeling language, again, for video feedback. But I think that that Google Earth idea um, has a lot of potential for sure. Uh, this um, slide is for people that are looking particularly for integration of Flipgrid within Microsoft Teams and with the, and, and Google Classroom. So Flipgrid is a Microsoft uh, tool, and uh, it is a very safe tool to use. You do need to get uh, parental consent uh, for using it, but um, there is a, a slide which uh, I've got next, I think, which, as you can see, is the consent form, the official consent form from Flipgrid, which you can then just download and you can send it off to your parents to make sure that you've got parental consent for the children to appear on Flipgrid. But I've already talked about the fact that um, the videos can be moderated and you can hide the children's faces as well. So it's a very, very safe uh, tool to use, I think. It's uh, it's uh, absolutely fabulous. OK, another thing that I did with uh, um, the MFL Twitter ID during lockdown was back in May, I decided to ask them a couple of questions such as, um, as you've all been uh, teaching remotely for a number of weeks now, what would you say are your do's and don'ts of online teaching? And then another question, how do you ensure interaction with your students when teaching either synchronously or asynchronously, e.g. playing games, uh, live, setting homework assignments, or using the chat function in online tools? And I had lots of uh, fantastic replies. What I did was I put together a Google Doc with all those um, separate bullet points in that Google Doc sharing some of the, uh, the the top tips from the the MFL Twitterati. So, for example, you'll see the first tip is keep students organized using Google Classroom or Microsoft Teams or Show My Homework. But all the activities are linked in the one place, one hyperdoc or one presentation um, or one one note and ask students to fill in their answers in text box grids uh, or, or cells in a table. So, in other words, ideas on how to keep the work as simple as possible for the students, as organized as possible, not you know sending them here and sending them there um, via you know, links in the chat, but having everything in the one place they can then work on. And I think that's really, really important, as well as all the other tips which the, uh, the community shared, which is wonderful. Another thing which um, I thought I would put together during uh, lockdown was some ideas around Google Forms. I was really inspired by an Australian uh, educator uh, Chris Betcher, who I've known for a few years now, and he produced a Google form showcasing uh, different ways in which you could use different question types within a Google form. And I was really inspired by this, and I decided that I was going to make a language-specific version, which I'm going to go through right now with you. So if I click on this link right now, you'll see what it looks like. I always recommend that the first uh, two questions you have is, what is your surname? What is your first name? That's because when you generate the Google Sheet, which you can automatically once you create your, your Google quiz, then you can then uh, click on the little drop down um, arrow next to the surname column, and it allows you to order those in alphabetical order. So it will then um, match your mark book, which I think is a really nice tip. Um, if you want to know how to make a Google quiz, there are many, many tutorials on, on YouTube. Just do a search for Google quiz to find them. I have given a little um, uh, set of instructions here on how to do that. What I'm going to do now is just go through some of the ways in which you can use Google Forms in, a, in you know different ways from maybe what you're used to. So for example, here you've got um, the multiple choice option. So when you're creating um, a, a question, there are lots of different options, including multiple choice, uh, multiple choice grid, uh, check boxes, et cetera. So I've named the exercise type here, and then I've given literal step-by-step -step instructions on how to use this. So this one, you have the question, what is the participle of the verb aller in French? And you've got one possible answer. So you just click on the correct one. Um, underneath, you've got another multiple choice one, but this one is using images. Um, I would recommend choosing the same format, e.g. they're all landscape, and these are all uh, royalty-free images from the Google Image Search, which comes with um, Google Forms, which is fantastic. Uh, here you've got the um, embedding of a, a text, which you could produce using the snipping tool that I talked about. There's also a Google Form add-on called Snip, which um, you could try out as well. So here, simple multiple choice, but based on a, uh, an example text. This one, I'm combining uh, more images with the answer as well as in the question. So the question is, how is this person feeling? And you've got a happy face and a sad face to indicate the uh, possible answer. Another multiple choice one here, just true or false, very straightforward. This one's a little bit different. So um, this one, you're recording some audio using a tool like online voice recorder, which is what I would recommend if I just demonstrate that very quickly. If I go here and I do a search for online voice recorder like this. And just do us, uh, let's put that in there. Let's do that again. Uh, my keyboard was just being a bit silly there. So online voice recorder, like that. Oh, that again. 
online voice recorder. The great thing about uh, wireless keyboards is occasionally they take a little bit of time to catch up. Anyway, it's all good. Right. So I'll just record some audio. This is a free website called Online Voice Recorder, which allows you to record to edit the beginning and the ending of your recording and save it as MP3. So it's a really simple way of creating an MP3 file, which is what you need for the activity I'm about to do in Google Forms. You press the stop icon. You can then remove the beginning and the end like this. You then click save. And you can then click save like that. You would then upload that audio onto uh, Google Drive. You then have to right click the, um, the file and click get link or you can create a folder and put all the audio into that one folder, then right click that folder and click get link, which will essentially make uh, a shareable link. When you click on the get link option, it will say restricted, but you click on restricted and then you either choose anyone in your domain or anyone with a link. And by doing that, you then copy the link and post it into one of the answer possibilities there. And that allows you to listen to the audio while you um, answer the question. So you can hear, the you can see here the question is, what is the correct pronunciation of answer one? If I click on this, it will take me to Google Drive and I'll be able to play the audio and everyone will be able to hear it in a second. Here we go. Answer one. Okay, so this one is just practicing pronunciation and that's how you do that. So it's a nice way of adding listening into a uh, Google form. This one is matching uh, pets in French, so just a matching activity. I'm using the multiple multiple choice grid this time, as opposed to as opposed to just multiple choice. So I'm just matching the activities. You just have to uh, click in the correct uh, circle there, and the um, it shuffles them each time because I've enabled the shuffle row order option, uh, which is also really good. And so that's just a matching one. This one is uh, putting the the words in the correct order in a sentence. Uh, a word of warning, I would suggest that if you have the longer items, you always put them here as the uh, uh, the uh, the header rows as opposed to along the top here, which is the, the headers for the columns, because you can get less, uh, that you can get fewer characters here. So I'd go for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven here, or, or the alphabet as well if you wanted to, but have the longer uh, number of characters here. You'll see this better in this next example, whereby... I'm reordering uh, the uh, lines in a dialogue. So this is sort of asking for uh, some food and drink in a, in a restaurant or cafe. I'm using the multiple choice grid one. And again, um, I would say nine is the maximum number of lines you want in your dialogue because otherwise it goes off the, the screen and you get like this scrolling toolbar, which is a bit un ungainly. And then you just have to, again, click in the correct radio button to show the correct order. This one is called drop down. So you've got lots of potential answers, but only one correct answer, which is actually this one here uh, to the question, what, which of the following verbs doesn't use être in the passé composé? This one is called checkboxes. So this is when you've got more than one correct answer. So which of these verbs uh, is regular in French? So you obviously click the ones which are um, correct and the ones which are not correct, you leave blank. But there's more than one correct answer. This one is similar to the one I was showing you already. So if you click on the link there, you hear the audio. It has a little um, couple of sentences about um, the different characters, what they were getting up to. And then you just simply click on the statements which are correct. Like this. OK. I think it's that one. Uh, there we are. And then uh, this one, classic grammar activity. So you've got the infinitive in brackets. You simply conjugate the correct for, uh, form of the verb and you write the answer in here. This one, you can embed a YouTube clip into a form and then again, uh, put the right answer here as a short answer. This one is called the ticks box grid. So you've got different sports that go with jouy and fair, and you have to uh, click on the correct box. So again, there's more than one right answer for each um, column, which is nice. This one's quite cool. So you've got Vokaroo. So if I go to vokaroo.com like this, I'm sure everyone knows this one, but have you used it in the Google form before? So Vokaroo, you just record some audio. This is a way of recording some speaking for a Google form for practicing speaking asynchronously. OK, you click Save and Share, you click Copy, you go back to your Google Form, and then you simply paste the link in here, like that. OK, and then the last one uh, is a linear scale. So you just have a statement, online learning is a good idea, and then you simply select the correct radio button. You then click Submit. All the answers are sent to um, your Google Form, and then you can go up to the top like this, and you click on the Edit option like this okay and then it will then show you the responses here 
like this, and that's where you can generate the Google Sheet. Okay, so it's really simple. If you don't know how to use a, a Google Form or Google Quiz, have a look on YouTube, and it will go through exactly what you need to do. Uh, right, let's carry on. So next uh, slide. This is an example of a Spanish teacher who took uh, some of those examples which I shared with you. I asked her for, for permission to do this, and she said that's fine. So in this example, you can see that she's using uh, sentence builders, which are here. So she's got um, a, a sentence builder whereby you take one item from each um, column, and then you make your own sentences. She's got a narrow reading activity here, which is uh, based on the work of uh, Dr. Gianfranco Conti. Uh, and here you've got uh, the multiple choice with the different images as well. So really nice use of Google Forms, which um, are just you know a bit more than the uh, a, a bit more interesting I think than the average Google Form that you normally see. Wheel of Names is another activity which is really cool. So it's a classic name spinner, but you can also add images as well, which takes it to a whole new level. So for example, in this one, you've got um, uh, a, a certain band which you may have heard of. Let's see which is the most popular. Beetle according to uh, Wheel of Names. Okay, and it so happens to be John. So here you can see that I can remove the name of that uh, person if I wanted to. Um, I can also disable the uh, the noises there and the um, uh, the confetti that comes up by just going to the options um, option. If I click, click here, it says create your own. You can see that you can also add an image by clicking here. You can customize it as well. Uh, you can share it as a link, so you can put in all your class lists and then share each one and save each one as a separate list. Lots of different possibilities of how you can use this. Um, in this one, I'm using the emoji keyboard, which allows me to add up to, well, I can add as many as I want, but I've added three emojis per section. I can then spin the wheel. Once it comes up, I can then ask the students to either say out loud a sentence, including all these different images in the one example, or maybe write it in the chat so you can be the first one to write something around um, a dog going to the cinema and then going for a cycle ride afterwards, for example. The next one is using a tool called Auto Draw in conjunction with Wheel of Names. So again, if I click um, here on Exit, and I just go uh, straight to the link, which is this one, and open it up now, you can see this is what it looks like. There we are, spin the wheel. There we are, and then one of them will come up, and then I can then ask, uh, a student to tell me all about their pet goldfish, for example. Now, to use Auto Draw, what you can do is go to autodraw.com. You can then click on the link like this, and you can draw something such as uh, if I wanted to go here and click, say, the square, choose the color. Say, if I wanted to um, do something black, and then I want to then quickly try to draw a cat, even though my cats always look like bats. And it's not the easiest thing to draw a cat with a mouse, no pun intended. There we are. But at the top of the screen, you can see that different items have come up. So uh, it thinks that this is either a cactus or a crown or a hand. But of course, it's actually a cat. And now it looks like a lovely cat. And I can make that cat a bit bigger like this. OK. I can also color the cat. I can click here and choose yellow. And I can click on the fill tool. And I could, oh, let's do that the other way around. Uh, let's do undo. Um, I can click on the uh, on here and make it yellow like that. Perfect. Then I click the three lines there, also known as a hamburger. Click download. It downloads my image. I can then upload it into Wheel of Names in the way that I've talked about already. So those are a few ideas around Wheel of Names. And the last one is just using Bitmojis uh, for you to choose which, character, which um, activity you'd like to do. OK. Right, in the next one, uh, we're going to have a look at um, a Chrome extension called Tab Resize that allows you to choose to have maybe two wheel of names side by side or as many as four wheel of names if you have a big enough screen. And that allows you to put together, let's say, a sentence builder whereby you spin on each wheel. It comes up with one random um, selection from each one, which then when you put them together, makes a nice uh, sentence, but in it randomly produced. Um, but you could use the same thing with images on each wheel to make um, a more... Uh, extended uh, final outcome for the students to make it more challenging for them. So it doesn't have to be text. It could be just images as well. Here's a couple of language teachers using Wheel of Names. You can see in this first one from Karine, um, she split the screen in two. So she's got two Wheel of Names side by side. And you can see that she's saying, I finally got around to trying Wheel of Names for verbs, tenses, making sentences, you name it, it does it. Um, 
uh, Jane Bassnett again on the right hand side, who's working in a, in a Microsoft environment. She's using OneNote in that example, and she's she's having a play around with uh, Wheel of Names and how to embed that into OneNote, which is uh, really cool to see. I think uh, here's another way of, of uh, harnessing a sentence builder. So here you've got uh, Flipty Randomizer. If you haven't heard of Flipty before, then uh, it's a collection of free um, exercise types, and the Flipty Randomizer is uh, has been very, very popular amongst the MFL Twitter arty. Let me give you a flavor of how it works. If I click on this link right now, uh, you can see that I can spin the wheel, and then they'll all come up uh, with different options. You can see here it's saying, I prefer to swim in the winter, but uh, when it is not raining, and then you can then spin again, and then it will then come up with another sentence. So this is the idea of a sentence builder. You choose one item from each column to make a random sentence. Another thing is if you have a Chrome extension called Helper Bird installed, which is H-E-L-P-E-R-B-I-R-D, then uh, you can right-click uh, the selected text, click Helper Bird, choose Tools, and choose Immersive Reader, which is a Microsoft um, tool. It should recognize the language automatically, and then it will then model pronunciation like this. Je dois faire du ski à Norwich, mais quand il ne pleut pas. Perfect. And then I can then click on the uh, settings option. I can choose a male voice or a female voice. I can also slow her down, although she sounds a bit drunk when I do that. Let's have a listen. Je dois faire du ski à Norwich, mais quand il ne pleut pas. There we are. Okay. So that's really nice, I think. And if I go on to the next slide, I can talk a bit more about Flippity. So each Flippity exercise is based on a Google Sheet. So you do need to have a Google account in order to create your um uh, examples, but all the templates are there, all the instructions are there on the flipty.net website. But the students do not need to have a uh, Google account to do the activity, which is fantastic. Okay, so that's how that is set up. Uh, here's some feedback from different uh, teachers in the MFL Twitter art. You can see uh, that um, Alice Smith School is saying, you know, thank you for the Flippity rec recommendation. Our year six have enjoyed experimenting and generating sentences using the vocabulary that Giddings Polly had imported from our sentence builders beforehand. Uh, Miss G, Miss B German is saying, uh, um, that she's using Flippity for time phrases, pronouns, and verbs, and uh, span it to get the sentence we had to create. It was great for us to practice past tense sentences, fab suggestion. And then you've also got um, Jade here talking about uh, using screen recording from Flipgrid with Flippity, which is mentioned by um, a video by Mike Elliott, MFL, which I'm going to talk about more in a second. And um, this is uh, Flippity examples from Mrs. Bellacat. So Catherine Bellas or Catherine Bellas. Uh, is a friend of mine who sent me this via email and has just done a step-by-step -step guide on how to use Flippity um, for producing good target language and the different things that you can do, as well as for translation as well. And I love at the bottom there, it says, P.S., if the wheel generates something ridiculous like Christmas is in June, why well, I hate football because it's great, the class shouts, n'importe quoi, which I just think is fantastic. So there we are. Okay, this is the um, screen recording with Flipgrid and 50 Randomizer, which was mentioned by Jade a moment ago. So this is a video by um, uh, Mike Elliott, um, which if you click on the link, what he does is he shows how you can be re recording your screen in Flipgrid while spinning the Flipty Randomizer. And then when each sentence comes up, you can then pronounce that sentence beautifully as a student, and then you can then translate it into, the, uh, into English. So in other words, what you could do is um, you could set a homework task whereby the students are recording their screen while um, spinning the wheel, and they can record up to, say, 10 sentences to practice, practice their pronunciation and to translate into uh, English. So a really nice idea there. And again, if you, if you click on the link, you'll be able to see exactly how that works. Here's another example of how you can use Flippity. This is called Flippity Manipulatives. So if I click on the link here, I'll give you an idea of how it works. You need to record your audio in Vokaroo and post it into the Google Sheet uh, in the way that I've just shown you. If I click play. Last week, I went to the cinema to watch the latest James Bond film. It was great. Afterwards, I went to the restaurant. OK, so I've just recorded my voice saying uh, the different lines in the uh, in here. I did that in English, but obviously you can do that in the target language. And then the idea is that you have to put the tiles into the correct order. So last week, I went to and so on and so forth. But of course, you could do that in the target language. And that'd be a really nice way of being able to practice uh, word order, uh, listening comprehension, but asynchronously. So it doesn't have to be done in the classroom. This could be done as uh, as homework or have you can make multiple um, examples of this and then get the, ch the children to take screenshots of their answers and then share them via uh, Teams or Google Classroom or whichever LMS you're using. OK, let's carry on. Right, another idea is using what's called quicker conversation. I'm going to uh, demonstrate this live right now. So I'm going to click on exit. 
This is really nice for speaking practice uh, asynchronously. So if I click on this link right now and I click here, it's going to take me to the uh, website called quicker.education, which is a UK-based website created by a physics teacher in the southwest of England. Uh, let me see if I'm logged in. I'm not logged in, so I just need to sign in quickly. So I click on sign in with email. I click sign in. And then what I can do is I can click on the home option here. Okay, so the teacher has to have an account, but the, the, the students don't. And I click create instant feedback. You can create individual stickers as well for recording audio and attaching that to an individual sticker. But I'm going to show you the conversations feature, which is here. So I click here, start a quick conversation. And I can uh, put in a title or a tag here, which allows me to easily retrieve uh, the different conversations I've made. But I'm just going to record this right now and show you how it works. Here we go. Blah, 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 blah. This is the first line of my conversation, or it could be a presentation, or it could be me giving some instructions to my students. And then I click Stop. OK, that uploads onto the servers. I can delete the audio. I can listen back to it. I can add a photo for free, which could be a picture, um, uh, which is supposed to be like a prompt for their speaking work or some instructions. I can add some text. So that could be, again, some instructions for how I want the students to, to record their audio. I can add in a web link as well. And I can also choose the sorts of response types that I want them to use. So if I uh, disable these two, so I, uh, these three, so I only have the microphone appearing, uh, that's what I would like. And then here, I'm going to moderate the conversation, which makes it perfect for use in the languages classroom. I then click Start Your Quicker Conversation like this. OK, so I, I can now record my response here. But if I click on um, a QR code here like this, I can now scan this QR code using my second device, which is my, on my iPad right now. And I'm just going to launch the camera, scan the QR code. OK, and you would obviously share the link in the chat if you're doing this remotely. And as a result of that, I can then uh, record my audio. So on my screen, um, I've got the microphone option. This is on my iPad screen, not on the screen that you're seeing right now. So I'm going to tap on uh, the microphone, tap record, and record my answer like this. Here we go. Blah, 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 blah. This is the second line of my conversation. Or it could be me giving some audio feedback to a student's presentation, or it could be uh, me giving some further instructions. I then press stop, and it will upload straight onto Quicker. OK, so having done that, on my screen, on my iPad screen, it says response waiting approval. But in a moment, it will appear on, my, on the page. As you can see, it's right there. And you can see, because I've enabled moderation, I can click approve or delete. Let's just have a listen back. Blah, 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 blah. This is the second line of my conversation. Or it could be me giving some audio feedback to a student's presentation, or it could be uh, me giving some further instructions. I then press stop, and it will upload straight onto Quicker. OK, so that's it. And then if you want to right click that audio play, you can click Save Audio As and keep that as a permanent uh, downloaded file. So you can keep um, everything um, permanently if you want to. Uh, with a free version, the audio is deleted after three months. Um, but if you want to keep it longer than that, you have to uh, pay a couple of dollars um, per month, um, and you can keep it as long as you want to. Once all the children have uh, replied with all the different bits of audio, then you can then lock the conversation like this, clicking on the padlock. And that means when you lock the conversation, no one else can then add to uh, the thread, which is just a really, really nice way of um, capturing speaking, but asynchronously. Let's go back to my slides here and present. OK, and then you'll see uh, some different examples in which language teachers are using Quicker. So here, top left, you've got Kareen again saying, use Quicker feedback to record my voice on a QR code, made a gap fill text on pages by speaking to my iPad and then blanked words out with Apple Pencil. My students practice their listening and grammar and thinking skills all in one go. Then you've got uh, Sarah Bell from Invercad MFL saying, have been exploring different ways of giving feedback when people submit photos of work, no tablet or magic pen. Before I paste it into Word, then commented, and today I remembered quicker feedback. I can live mark and send a unique link to each pupil. Uh, then you've got a school up in Scotland, another school in Scotland, Turnbull um, MFL. As you can see, thanks, Creative Sammy, for the inspiration. These might be my new thing. Use quicker feedback to give detailed pointers to my form, AH, on how to improve their essays. And we also did a nice QR code, Dicti, translation rates with higher uh, using recordings made by AH, which must be the name of the teacher. Um, here, you've got Claire Wilson, who is Leo Languages on Twitter, saying, enjoyed using Quicker for a speaking homework. Nice to hear some students speaking German, given the current limitations in the classroom. 
then Miss Burke saying, I, I love being able to continue doing speaking practice thanks to quicker feedback. I particularly like the emphatic hola, senorita, at the start of each recording. So it is supposed to be anonymous. If you want to identify the children, then they would have to say their name at the beginning or maybe write their name in the text. Uh, option if you enable the text option so that is something to consider and then uh, vincent everett there is saying i've used it with year 12 spanish for voice to voice dictation they listen and repeat back a bit longer each time until they can do the whole text or summarize it or answer a question simple spontaneous spon response is not a presentation just like in the classroom which i just think is another really creative way of using quicker and you can see all the links are there on the slide for you vincent has already been very creative around using um, quicker conversations in a street view mystery. So he's done a, um, he's gone to the, uh, or used the uh, Google street view in a town called Versoul in, Fra in France. And he's come up with a whole set of different clues, which you can answer by going to the different links that he's created. But he's also used quicker as a way of asking the, uh, the MFL Twitterati in order to uh, record different bits of audio as if they are an old man or an old woman or a young child and then embedded those video clips into this presentation. Let me just move it forward a little bit and show you what I mean. Okay, so in this example, you've got an old man there in front of a shop, and you can see you can download this resource. You've got the uh, the clue in the target language, as well as a QR code, which um, different members of the MFL Twitter IT have recorded for Vincent, because we, we like to work together and support each other. And uh, so you could then listen to the audio while trying to solve the clue. Really, really nice idea and completely free. I'm sure you'd find that very inspiring to, to check out. OK, so there's that. And then here's um, a really comprehensive article which I wrote for the Modern Language Teachers Lounge again for Linguascope. But um, at the time, it was a public group. It's now a private group. So I decided to copy the article into um, a Google Doc, which you can access on this presentation. And essentially, I'm just showing all my different ideas around using technology to promote speaking listening skills, which you can use uh, in a remote or hybrid context. So you should find that very, very useful, I think. And it will work on different platforms or Google specific or Microsoft specific uh, platforms. Now, teachertools.digital is another, um, uh, it's a, well, it's a freemium tool. So there's lots of things you can do for free, but there are things you can pay for as well. Designed by Paul Rain, who is uh, based in Japan. And lots of ideas around audio recording and audio feedback. So I would, would really encourage you to check that website out as well. Uh, here is um, Esmeralda Salgado, who is Botones Salgado. And she's been amazing during lockdown. She wrote a really nice post around feedback uh, using technology based on the research of um, Hattie, as well as uh, Dylan William is also a really good person to um, look out for uh, ideas around feedback in education. And based on the, the work of Esther Park, who I find really inspirational at the moment to follow on Twitter, Mrs. Park Shine on Twitter, she created these sort of personalized animated feedback uh, stickers, which you can drag into Google Keep and then drag into uh, Google Docs or Google Slides. And so I had decided to have a go myself. And you can see I've done a literal step-by-step -step guide in order to create um, one of these animated GIFs. So big, thank, uh, big thanks to uh, Esther for the inspiration. But if you want to create your own, then just follow these uh, instructions. And I've also put some YouTube clips in for other people describing how to create this as well. Whiteboard.fi is uh, also proved very popular amongst language teachers. So uh, it's a, basically a free way of creating digital whiteboards. You get one whiteboard per student and then all the whiteboards appear on the screen completely free to use very safe uh, and uh, moderated and uh, it's just fantastic so i would just check that out in your own time here's some feedback from some of the uh, teachers who have been using it my favorite is this one from scanzorn thank you very much i will think about ways i can use it in my class thank you again for whiteboard.fi it is the highlight of my lockdown I think my year 10 will be forever grateful to you for it, which is just great. And then this is uh, Florence uh, in New Zealand saying, today I used whiteboard.fi with my students for the first time. They loved it. It's very responsive and allowed me to give feedback, use it with Microsoft Teams. Thanks uh, uh, to me for introducing it. OK, so uh, that's another firm favorite. Here are lots of ideas around using uh, whiteboards that were posted on Twitter, one by Samantha Decker from the States and one by uh, Claire Hampson from England. Um, a few years ago now, one from 2013 and one from 2012, but the ideas are classic ideas, so you could then use the same things in uh, whiteboard.fi. And um, towards the end, I'm just going to play you a little video talking about um, the pedagogical paradigm shift that some of the language teachers in the MFL Twitter IT have felt uh, during lockdown and, uh, and beyond. So I'm just going to play this for you now, and I hope you find this interesting. Here we go.
So I think very inspirational, um, that particular video. And just a, a final thought, if you like what you've seen and you would like me to support you in the States or whoever is watching this video in whichever country you are in, then I would love to hear from you. And here are 18 example sessions that I can uh, share with you um, via the link at the bottom there. And if you're interested in asking me to do a webinar for you, for your um, department, for your district, get in touch and I would love to help. So I really hope you found that useful. And here is the presentation, https colon forward slash forward slash is dot gd forward slash global cred one. Thank you ever so much everyone for listening and stay safe and um, yeah, get in touch if you feel that you would like any help at all. Thanks ever so much to global cred for this opportunity.